everyone! So we are now live and the topic for today is Don't let your heart envy sinners. It's, it's such a good topic actually and it's really a reminder and a call to repent, a call to come back to Jesus, a call to fill your heart with God's love if ever you have forgotten about the first love. So before we start, share this video and tag your friends in the comments. So before we begin, let's get the algorithm up everybody. Hello everyone! So share this post and tag your friends because our topic for today is honestly very, very, very amazing and very reminding and it would really inform and remind each and every single one of us to come back to God, to repent and to, to receive His love once again. So if you feel like your fire has gone cold, if you feel like the love of God in your heart has gone away, then tag, this po tag, tag your friends and send this in your group chats and share this post because this is honestly a reminder that we should come back to the first love. This is a reminder that we should be filled with God's love, filled with His presence. And if you feel like you have been, your love for God has gone cold, your love for Jesus has gone cold, then this is the video for you. And the Holy Spirit has led you to watch this today because this is actually a rebuke not more of an encouragement but this is a rebuke especially for believers and especially for so-called believers so if you're watching this then comment down below i'm ready to be rebuked hallelujah because this um this preaching is not more of an encouragement once again it's more of a rebuking it's more of equipping and it's more of like reminding actually reminding us that if our love for god has gone cold then it's really hard to continue running the race to continue fighting the good fight of faith. Hallelujah, I see there are 238 people watching this today. So let's get it to 250 and then let's begin this live. So share this post and like this page for more videos and for more preachings such as this. So our topic for today once again is don't let your heart envy sinners. In Bisaya, ayog sugot nga magselos ka sa mga makasasala. In Tagalog, wag mong hayaan mainggit ang iyong puso sa mga makasalanan. So don't let your heart envy sinners. That's our topic for today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's begin. Let's begin this with a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, Lord, we praise you, Jesus. We worship your name, O oh God, and we glorify your name, Jesus. I pray that as this word is going to start, may your presence, Father, flow upon each and every single one watching, that your word, Father, would pierce their hearts, would pierce their souls, Father, that they will be able to become reminded, that they would be equipped, Father, and I pray that every word uttered out of my lips, Father, would be yours, Father. And Lord, you... You, you alone deserve all glory. You alone are worthy. You alone deserve our praise, Jesus. And it is not I, but it is you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our topic for today is don't let your heart envy sinners. Amen. Comment down below, amen, if you're ready to hear this message. Don't let your heart envy sinners. You know, the closer you come to God, the more of the world you must leave behind. As we serve Jesus, as we glorify the name of Jesus, as we walk in our faith, as we as we run this race, we need to leave behind the world. We need to leave it all behind and follow Jesus. For sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what drags us away from the Lord. And the closer we come to Him, the closer we come to Jesus, the more of this world we must leave behind and that you should realize that these things should be thrown away. Worldly music should be thrown away bad words should be thrown away because god is the only treasure we cannot lose i may lose money i may lose fame but if i have god just like job then i have everything that i need and the closer we come to god once again the more of the world we must leave behind now ask yourself this question have i left it all behind or as i'm serving god am i still carrying this weight you know when jesus called um Peter, when Jesus called the disciples, when Jesus called Peter, he said, follow me, follow me. They left their nets and followed Jesus. The thing is, for most of us, when Jesus called you and said, follow me, instead of leaving it all behind, instead of leaving behind that net, instead of leaving behind the world, instead of leaving behind sin, you are carrying it while serving God. And you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and you cannot serve the world as well. James 4.4 4 says, friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. Meaning that when God calls 
called you or when God called you, are you still carrying the weight of your past? Are you still carrying the weight of sin? Are you still carrying the world? Are you still carrying sin? Or have you left it all behind to follow God? Because I know, and I, it is in the Bible, it is written that, that um, come follow me. But they said, oh Lord, I still have this to do. Oh Lord, I still have that to do. Lord, I cannot let go of this. I cannot let go of that. You must leave the world behind because you cannot serve two masters. You cannot say I'll serve God on Sunday and I'll go to the world on Monday. You cannot say I'll worship lead on Sunday and I'll go to the bar on Monday because friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. And ask yourself this question in your walk in Christ, in your walk in Jesus, are you still carrying sin or have you really left it all behind? You know, this saying by Dwight Moody is such a, um, a reminder you know, Christians are living in the world, but should not be filled with it. We are living in this world, but we are not of this world. We are placed in this world to become the light. We are placed in this world to speak about the goodness of God, to bring people to Jesus. So we are living in the world, but we should not be filled with it. You know, a ship lives in the water, but if the water gets into the ship, it goes to the bottom. So Christians are living in the world, but if the world gets to them, they sink. We are living in this world, but if pornography gets to you, we are living in this world, but if envy gets to you, but if worldly music gets to you, if anger gets to you, then you will sink. Though we are in this world, we are not of this world. Now the verse in 1 Corinthians 9.26 says, So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. So anyone here who doesn't know the meaning of shadow boxing, it's punching the air, punching nothing at all. So what is your purpose in your service towards God? What are you living for? What is the reason why you are serving Jesus? What is the reason of your walk in Christ? What is the reason of your service towards the Lord? What is the reason of you serving Jesus? What is your purpose? I want to, you to take a minute and reflect what is your purpose in serving Christ? Because it's hard to serve Christ without a purpose. As 1 Corinthians 9.26 says, So I run with purpose in every step. So as you run the race in God, I pray with a purpose. I weep with a purpose. I read the word with a purpose. But if you are serving Christ, if you are serving Jesus without a purpose, then you are just shadow boxing. And the Bible clearly says, I am not just shadow boxing. It's hard to serve Christ without a purpose. Because when you live for money, when you are serving Christ for money or for success, or when you live for money, success, comfort, fun, or friends, your relationship with Christ will die as envy grows. Now, envy for what? Envy for sin. It is especially important that we do not envy others who spend their life in ways that are opposite of what God desires. Don't let your heart envy sinners. Proverbs 23, 17 says, don't envy sinners, but always continue to fear the Lord. What are examples of envying sinners? What are examples of um, getting jealous of sinners? Oh, good for them, they can do TikTok. Oh, good for them, they can say bad words. Oh, good for them, they can watch cinemas. Oh, good for them, they can wear this. Good for them, they can, they can have fun. Good for them, they can do this. Good for them, they can do that. Good for them, they're so free to do this thing. Good for them, they're so free to do that thing. Good for them, they can go to bars. Oh, good for them, they can do this and do that and do anything they want to do. But if you think, if your mindset is like this, if you still have this kind of thinking and you claim that you are a believer, then I'm telling you that Jesus has hasn't been the center of your life. I'm telling you that you are still not submerged in the goodness and in the presence of God for you are still envying the very thing that is the reason why our Lord was crucified. That is the very reason why Jesus was killed. Why Jesus was, was, was killed. And if you continue to say and you claim that you're a believer and you always say, oh, good for them, they can do this. Oh, good for them, they can do this. Then this mentality is not healthy as a Christian. This mentality is not healthy as a believer because you just made Jesus become a part of your life and not your life itself. I was talking with this with a youth, with one of a youth member as well. You just made Jesus a part of your life, 
but you do not make him your life itself. Lord, you can just stay here, but on this part of my life, you cannot touch. Lord, just stay here, but this side, you can no longer move. Lord, on Sundays, you are my God, but on Monday, I'm on the world. Lord, on Saturdays, I will worship you, but on Tuesdays, I'm in the world. That is why you're still saying good for them, they can drink alcohol. Good for them, they can do TikTok. Good for them, they can say bad words. But in reality, when you have served God truly with all your heart, with all your soul, if you love Jesus with all that you are, then you wouldn't be jealous of sin. You wouldn't be jealous of sinners. You wouldn't envy sinners and say, oh, good for them, they can do this. But because Jesus is in you, you have life itself inside of you. You have peace and joy and everything in you. But if you still envy the things of the world, if you still envy sin, then Jesus hasn't been the center of your life at all. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Meaning that your old desires, your old passions, your old way of living, your former way of life, your, your, um, your old speech, your old things that you see, it's no longer you. But it is now God dwelling in you for the old has gone and the new has come but if you claim to be a believer especially believers who have been serving God for months now for years now and you still envy the things that sinners do then Galatians 5 24 hasn't applied in your life the Bible says those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there Meaning that every time you hear bad words, you wouldn't say, oh, good for them, they can say that. But instead, when you hear bad words, it's, it's not for me anymore. It's not what I want anymore. It's not what I desire anymore. For sin, I don't like sin. Sin is a whack. Sin is ugly. I don't like to do that. I don't want to do that. But if you are a Christian and still see sin and say, oh, I wish I could do that, but I can't, then, then what? Jesus is not... The love of Jesus is not the reason of your service before Christ. And yes, there are temptations. And yes, we all sin. Because the Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the Bible clearly says that you must be born again. We're all sinners and we're all doomed to eternal separation from God because of our sin. When we're born again through Jesus, we die to our old life of sin and become spiritually alive in Christ. The Bible clearly says you must be born again, and I have preached this as well. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's called Personal Identity. You can check it out later. But the Bible says you must be born again. You say, oh, there are temptations, but the Bible says you must be holy, for God is holy. And then you make it an excuse, oh, I can do this, oh, I can do that, because God will forgive in the end. But that mentality is not healthy and not good as a believer. And do you think that God would glorify your actions? Do you think that Jesus would be glorified in the way of your thinking? Would you think that Jesus would be glorified in your mindset that you would say, oh, good for them, they could do this. When Jesus, what Jesus is looking for for you is your willingness, your willingness to serve him, your willingness to obey him, your willingness to surrender your life to him and when you're especially a long time believer when you're especially a long time Christian and still envy sin and say good for them they can do this good for them they can do that then you are not serving Christ because you love him because if you love Jesus then you would love what he loves and hate what he hates but if until now you're a believer and say good for them they can do this or good for them they can do that then you're not serving Jesus because you love him you're doing it out of your own strength, out of your own might, and out of your own power. Because to labor in Christ is no labor at all. So you stay away from sin, but you still envy sinners. You still want to do that. Yes, there are temptations, but I'm talking here about believers that are especially um, long and especially have been mature in their faith in Christ, but still envy sinners, and you're not serving Jesus because you love him. It's so easy for you to do that sin. It's so easy for you to say bad words 
and repent later. It's so easy for you to schedule your repentance and say, oh, I'd repent on Sunday. Oh, I'd be holy on Sunday. It's so easy for you to say that. Then you're not serving Christ because you love him. You're serving Christ out of work. Because the Bible says, 1 John 5, 3, loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. So if you love God, then you would keep his word. If you love God, then you would not just read the word, but obey the word. You would live out the word of God that you would prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. So if you have this kind of mentality as you serve the Lord, if you have this kind of mindset, way of thinking as you serve the Lord, then you are under the law and not under Christ's freedom. You are under the law that my pastor says, if I don't do this, then I can go to heaven. My, pa my leader says that if I do this, then I will go to heaven. You are not under Christ's freedom because you are not doing it out of love. Galatians 3.11 says, So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scriptures say, It is through faith that a righteous person has life. What do you mean by law? Doing good works. Oh, I'd not say bad words. Oh, I'd not watch this. I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. But with human strength, you know, goodness can never measure up to God's holiness. You can be a good person but your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life because it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Faith in God, love in Jesus, and with human strength, you try to keep the commandments. With human strength, you try to keep His Word, such as doing this and doing that, but it is all work without love, and though works are very important, but we are not saved through our works. We are not saved through the things we do. Don't get me wrong, works are very, very important as we serve the Lord, but you are doing it out of work, but without love. You are doing it because you have to, but you're not doing it because you love Him. You are just doing it because it's a requirement. Yes, we must do it because we have to do it, but you are obeying God's word, not because you love Him, but because it's what people say you must do. It's what people say you must. Ephesians 2.9 says, Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. Once again, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. Goodness can never save you. So if you think that your good works will save, it can never save. Good works are important. But if without the love of Jesus, without Jesus, that's not what saves you. Remember the church of Ephesus, Revelations 2, 2 to 3 says, I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they're apostles but are not. You have discovered they are liars and you have patiently suffered for me without quitting. Now, as I read this, these are believers. These are people inside the church. Revelations 2, 2 through 3, if you have your Bible, so you can open it there. These are people inside the church. Maybe leaders, maybe pastors, maybe worship leaders, maybe worship team, or maybe even churchgoers, elders. Your hard work, your patient endurance, you stay away from sin, you discern people, and you patiently suffer for God. But on verses 4 to 5, it says, but I have this complaint against you. And you know, this, is, this church he is speaking to isn't just a temple, but it's you. It's you, the church, the temple of God. I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Meaning work, work, work. But where is the love? Love, love. Where is your love for Christ? You stay away from this out of works, but you don't do this out of love. That's why on Sundays you can do it, but on Mondays you go to sin. That's why on Wednesdays you can go to midweek services, but on Thursdays you go to sin because you you are serving God out of work and not out of love. We stay away from sin because we love God. We read the word because we love Jesus. We help others because we love Jesus. But if your mentality is, oh, I stay away from sin because I have to. Oh, I, I preach because I have to. Yes, you have to. But if it isn't out of the abundance of love, if you, if you worship lead just because you have to, and not because you love him, 
Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, 14, and do everything with love. If you preach just because you have to, not because you love him, then that is the reason why you still envy sinners. That is the reason why you still envy sin. You know, staying away from sin is different from envying sin. Temptations are different from envying sin. Temptations are different from giving in to that temptation. So if you say good for them, they can do this. Good for them, they can do it. Oh, but I can't. Good for them. You know, the word good for them, they can do this is different from I don't want to do this because God would get angry because I love Jesus. That's a total different mentality. We stay away from sin because we love Jesus. We read the word, we preach, we worship lead, we play the instruments because we love Jesus. Out of the abundance of love. So if that first love has gone away from you and it's so easy for you to envy sinners, then come back to the first love because maybe the first love has gone away from your heart. Maybe God's love has drifted away from you. So this way of thinking that good for the sinners, they can do this and they can do that actually shows that you're serving Jesus with your own strength and not serving Jesus because of the love he has given you. Well, in fact, I preach because I love God. I preach because Jesus saved me. He, he, picked, my, he picked me up. He turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. And this love, this joy that I have experienced is worth sharing to others. But if you're still thinking good for the sinners, they can do this. Good for the sinners, they can do that. Then you're not serving Jesus because of love. Come back to the first love. And this is one of the reasons why you're weak in your faith. Or one of the reasons why maluyaka. One of the reasons why you drift away from God's presence. One of the many reasons why you, one of the many reasons why your love for him will grow cold. And you're asking yourself, oh, why is my love for Jesus? Why is the fire gone? Why is the fire weakened? Why did I grow cold in my love in God? And you ask that, my answer, or the answer is, what have you been eating? If you're eating pornography, that fire would definitely die. If you're eating anger, hatred, lust, perversion, then that, that fire would die. But if you're eating God's word, if you're eating, um, eating his presence and, and if your food is food that is good for the soul then that fire wouldn't die at all the reason why your fire is gone well it's because you haven't been reading your bible well it's because you haven't been praying well it's because you haven't been staying away from sin well it's because you have been envying the very thing why jesus died it's because you have been envying the reason why jesus was crucified jesus was mocked at and psalm 73 2 to 3 says but as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw this prosperity of the wicked. My feet had almost slipped, meaning your service in God, your relationship with Jesus, the fire has been dying and dying and dying because you, was, you were envious of the boastful, envious of sinners, envious of the prosperity of the wicked that good for them they can do this good for them they can do that good for them they can do this sin and do that sin and that is the reason why your feet are slipping that is the reason why your steps are stumbled instead of focusing on your walk with god which def which definitely includes staying away from sin you know as you walk in jesus as you serve jesus it always includes Staying away from sin because sin is what separates us from God. So repent of your sins and turn to God. Anyway, instead of focusing on your walk with God, which definitely includes staying away from sin, you focus on the very thing that separates us from God. Instead of focusing on your walk in Jesus, you focus on the very thing that separates us from God. That's why most of the time when we are being tempted, it's so easy to fall into that temptation because instead of, of saying, no, I don't do that. And no temptation is not tempting. Every temptation is tempting. That's why it's called temptation. But it's so easy for you or it's so easy to fall into that temptation. 
it's because you still want to do that thing and you're not willing to stay away from that sin well in fact God is looking for willingness willingness to stay away from this willingness to stay away from that because because as you surrender to Jesus he wants your willingness he doesn't want forceful worship nor forceful music team oh no one would play okay I'll play na lang the word the word na lang he doesn't want na lang Jesus doesn't want to be your last option. Jesus doesn't want to be an option only, but He wants to be your only one. Jesus wants to be the only one for you. That's why most of the time when you're being tempted, it's so easy for you to do that sin because because you still want to do that. You still want to be there. You still want to belong. And you still envy that sin. Now I understand that we have struggles. I understand that we have temptations. But staying away from sin is different from envying sin. Willingness to go away from sin. Willingness to have a prayer life. That's why the Bible says devote yourself. Devote yourself meaning even if I'm tired, Lord, I'll still pray. Even if I'm facing trials, Lord, I'll still worship you. Even when I'm in the storm, Jesus, I'll still love you with all that I am because God wants your willful heart, willful surrender, willingly go away from sin willingly have a prayer life saying god use me jesus use me jesus here i am jesus i am available for you to use me that's why the bible says in colossians 3 23 work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the lord rather than for people and that is one of the many reasons why um many reasons why uh people are away people go away and drift away from the presence of jesus well it's because they haven't been working willingly in their service before the lord in their service before jesus in their love before jesus and and when you start to catch yourself and being sinners i'm sorry if the if the pads have gone away but when you catch yourself and being sinners then don't hide your guilt when you catch yourself envying sinners and where you catch yourself starting to drift away from the presence of Jesus, when you catch yourself starting to go away from his love, starting to drift away from his grace, starting to drift away from your first love, because I know that you can feel it. I, a lot of people even say, nah, nah, I have been weak. My love in Christ have been gone. My love for Jesus has been, has been down. It's not the same as before. So if you start feeling like your love in Christ have been weakened, if you start feeling that your love in Jesus have been away, if you start ca to catch yourself drifting away from the love of God, when you catch yourself envying sinners, then don't hide your guilt. Confess, repent, and stop. Once again, confess, repent, and stop psalms 32 verse 3 said when i refused to confess my sin my body wasted away and i groaned all day long the reason why your prayers are hindered the reason why you cannot continue to run the race it's because you hide your sin instead of repenting you stop you refuse you refuse to confess your sin you refuse to say sorry you refuse to stop and you hide it instead of asking God for help. And I know that it's hard because that is what we were used to. I was in sin for 14 years. I was in sin for how many years? And I know that most of us here have been in sin for 20 years or 16 years. But you need to ask and rely on the strength of Jesus because with human strength you cannot make it you cannot do it on your own and that is why when you start to catch yourself envying sinners when you start to catch yourself envying the things of the world don't hide your guilt don't hide your sin don't refuse to confess your wrongdoing repentance isn't just sorry isn't just lord sorry on sundays lord i'm sorry but on monday you're gonna do it again but repentance is a lifestyle repentance is when you change repentance is when you leave it all behind and follow jesus and you cannot change by your own strength you cannot change by your own power you cannot change by your own education you can change if the power of the holy ghost is starting to work through you that's why we repent that's why we ask god for guidance and help because he helps us he helps us in our weakness his grace is sufficient for our weakness and our hardships so confess repent and stop don't envy the wicked do not forsake the lord in order to pursue the things of this world once again church please listen to this 
Do not forsake the Lord in order to pursue the things of this world. Do not stop the ministry in order to pursue the things of the world. Do not stop worship leading in order to pursue the things of the world. Do not stop serving Jesus in order to pursue the things of the world because those things are temporary. Do not stop being a pastor just in order to pursue the things of the world. Do not stop to worship lead. Do not stop preaching. Do not stop playing the piano and worshiping Jesus just in order to pursue the things of the world. And this is what breaks my heart as well to see people that were once on fire for God, but they stopped serving Jesus because they pursued lust, because they pursued sin, because they pursued fame, because they pursued things of the world. And people drift away from God just to pursue work, just to pursue the things of this world. They have forsaken the Lord. They have forsaken their calling. And do not forsake Jesus in order to follow the steps of the wicked. Let us be reminded of the reasons why it is better to live in the fear of the Lord. Church, be reminded of the reasons why it is the best to live in the fear of the Lord than to seek enjoyment and prosperity in the way of the wicked, in the way of wickedness. It's better, it's the best to live in the fear of the Lord rather than to seek enjoyment, rather than to seek, seek fulfillment and prosperity in the way of wickedness. Remember Proverbs 23, 17, don't envy sinners, but always continue to live, uh, but always continue to fear the Lord. Now, if you catch yourself envying sinners, then this is definitely for you. Here are, let's be reminded of the reasons why it is better to live in the fear of the Lord. So here are some reasons. If you catch yourself, then it is not yet too late to run back to the love of the Father. This is not condemnation. Every word that, that have come out of my mouth is not condemnation. It is rebuking. And rebuking isn't rejection, but a redirection of your steps for you to come back into the right path because you have gone into the wrong track. You are running the wrong race now. And this word that is speaking in you is a word that would lead you back to the path and to the race that Jesus wants you to run. Because at this point of your life, if you are envying sinners, then you are not running the race of Jesus. You are running your own race that is filled with deception and lust. So let us be reminded of the reasons why it is better to live in the fear of the Lord. So here are the reasons. Remember that the pleasures of sin is fleeting. The pleasures of sin are passing. Everything that you get from sin, whether fame, whether money, whether your name, whether prosperity, whether anything, the pleasures of sin are passing. Temporary, not eternal. Whatever pleasure one may experience from sin will not last. It would just last for 30 minutes. It would just last for one hour. It would just last for two hours. It would just last for years. But the sin that people enjoy now will not be able to satisfy them. The pleasure that one experienced from sin will not last. It will not last, it has not last, and it will never, ever last. Because Hebrews 11, 25 says, He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. The fleeting pleasures of sin. Meaning that the pleasures of sin are passing, the pleasures of sin are fleeting, the pleasures of sin are not eternal. The pleasures of sin, it can never satisfy you. It can never satisfy your life. You think that, oh, if I say bad words, I would be satisfied. Oh, if I do TikTok, I would be satisfied. But I'm telling you, TikTok could just satisfy you for 30 seconds. And after dancing, where is that satisfaction? Where is that smile? Where is that dance of joy? But if you dance with joy for the Lord, then you could dance forever. Remember, the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23, a very common verse. Well, in fact, it's so basic that people forget it. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death, church. If the wages of sin is death before, then the wages of sin is still death now. For the wages of sin is death. The free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So you may say, if God is a loving God, then why would he make hell? Well, let's revise the question. Why would you choose hell over a loving God? Death is punishment for one sin, 
Paul was referring to the death that stand in contrast to the everlasting life, described in the second part of the verse, Romans 6, 23. Not physical death, but eternal death, everlasting death. Remember, the wages of sin is death, and hell is still a hot church. People are still crying in hell. People on earth hate to hear the word repent, but people in hell wish that they could hear it once more. Remember, the sin that you are envying is the sin that people are regretting in hell. People in hell are wishing for even just a single drop of water. People in hell are wishing that they could have repented. People in hell are wishing that they wouldn't have done that sin, but you, while still on earth, wish that you are still doing that sin, while people who are in agony in hell are wishing and hoping that they shouldn't have done the mistakes that they have done before, but it is too late. And you watching this right now, it is not yet too late. So death is the punishment for your sin. Death is the punishment for the sin that you are envying. Death is the punishment for the sin that you so want to do. Second Thessalonians 1, 9. They will be punished with eternal destruction forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. Forever separated from the Lord. Forever separate from the Lord. Can you imagine that? Forever separated from Jesus. You want to do this? You want to do that? Well, the wage of that is you're going to be forever separated from the Lord in agony. Forever separated from the Lord. I can't imagine that you know the word. You know what Jesus did, but you're still living in that sin. And you would say, you are an almost Christian. And how hard it is and how hurtful it is to be an almost Christian. Almost getting into his kingdom. Almost getting your name written in the Lamb's book of life. But not making the mark. Not making the cut. Almost getting into heaven, but not getting there at all because you are envying sin. You are envying sinners. So we should not envy sinners because they are headed for eternal damnation, suffering and weeping and crying and go in the hell fire. So when Christ sets you free, stay free. Don't get tangled up in the things you were bound into then. Jesus set you free from TikTok. Jesus set you free from bad words. Jesus set you free from online games. Jesus set you free from LGBT. Jesus set you free from your darkness and from your sin. But why don't you want to stay free? And I know I've heard this as well, especially to the young people. Well, people reading the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, people say, oh, the Israelites are so hard-headed. The Israelites are so complacent, so complaining. They always complain. But church, assess yourself. You have been set free. But why do you want to be bounded by slavery once again? You are no different than the Israelites being set free by God, being seen His power, seen His glory, and still say, oh, I wish I was back to Egypt. Oh, I wish I was back to, to, to worldliness. You have been set free from slavery, and yet you want to be a slave again. You have been set free from Egypt, and yet you still want to go to Egypt again. And that is so, so, so confusing. Christ has set you free. Why aren't you remaining in that freedom? Christ has set you free. Why aren't you staying in the thing that you have experienced? You want to go back to Pharaoh. You want to go back to Egypt, but it's hard there. You've experienced being depressed, oppressed, and hardship. But you want to go back there. When Christ sets you free, stay free. Don't, don't get tangled up in the things you were bounded to then. Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Jesus has set you free. But by your actions, you're bounding yourself once again in the yoke of slavery. You have bounded yourself once again by Pharaoh, by Egypt. Jesus has set you free. And remember that the wages of sin was death, the wages of sin is death, and the wages of sin will always be death. No matter how much you try to excuse yourself that, oh, Jesus is forgiving, I'll just sin now and repent later. No matter how much you try to excuse yourself, the wages of sin is death. Remember also that earthly wealth 
or earthly riches are temporary. Fame, money, education, position, everything is temporary. 1 Timothy 6.17 says, Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Remember, the riches of this life can be stolen or destroyed, as Matthew 6.19 says. Even though one keeps his wealth until death, you cannot bring even a cent on Judgment Day when you meet God face to face. You can't tell God, God, I'm rich. God, I'm famous. God, I have this much followers. Even when you keep your wealth until death, even when you place that money in your grave, you cannot bring even a cent on judgment day. So remember that if you sin because of money, it's all temporary. That is not what would fulfill your heart. Now let us understand. Now we understood that everything is temporary. Every sin is temporary. Every pleasures you receive from sin, it's all temporary. Psalm 73, 16 to 17 says, So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper, but what a difficult task it is. Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. And that's where we are now. We finally understand the destiny of the wicked. So every time you catch yourself envying sin, understand the destiny of the wicked because Satan just wants you to see the now, the present. He doesn't want you to see the future the payment that you would pay for that sin, the thing that you would suffer for that sin. So I try to understand why the wicked prosper and understand that the destiny of the wicked, where they should be, where they are going, where they belong. So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper, but what a difficult task it is that I went into our sanctuary, O oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. See, after death, there are two places a soul can go. And a lot of people say, Oh, we'll all die. We'll all die anyways. What's the point? We'll all die anyways. In Bisaya, I'm a matay man japon ng nanang, may pulos. We'll all die anyways. What's the point? You see, after death, there's two places a person's soul can go. Yes, we'll all die, but we have different destinations. Yes, we will both die, but we have different destinations. You can go to hell. I can go to heaven. You can go to heaven. There are two destinations. After death, there are only two places a soul can go. And you cannot stay in the middle. When you die, you cannot stay here on earth dwelling around. No, you cannot. Heaven or hell. The children of God will spend eternity with Him. But those who aren't the children of God will spend eternity separated from Him. Most people have at least a basic understanding of hell. It is a place of torment and agony where everything unholy and wicked is cast down as suffer. Hell as a destination of those who have rejected the gospel and those who have rejected Jesus. Now ask yourself, have you rejected the gospel? If you say no, then check your actions. Have you rejected the gospel? By, by wanting to do this, by, it's, by being so easy to do this and do that, you are rejecting the gospel. You are rejecting Jesus. By lips, you give lip service, but God doesn't want lip service. What? What's the meaning of lip service? Lip service means just out of the lips, but not out of actions. Just mere words, but no actions. And actions speak louder than words. If you say, I haven't rejected God's word, I haven't rejected God's gospel, check your actions. Because your actions prove if you have rejected Him or if you haven't. Remember, those who fear and obey God will be rewarded. So don't envy sinners anymore. Once again, this is not condemnation, what I'm speaking, it's really not condemnation. So those who fear, those who obey God will be rewarded. So church, if you have been persecuted or if you have been facing trials and difficulties in your service towards God, remember you will be rewarded. So don't envy sinners anymore. If, you are, if you catch yourself envying sinners, don't envy them anymore. Temporary things, that's all they're ever gonna get. Money, that's all they're gonna get. Fame, that's all they're gonna get. I'm telling you, that's all they're gonna get. No, what we have, we have life eternal. Our Creator knows who we are. Our Creator knows who we are, church. And remember that those who fear and obey God will be rewarded. And the sinners, temporary things is all they're ever gonna get. But when they die, 
they couldn't bring anything in their graves. Remember, we shouldn't envy sinners because we shouldn't envy sinners because we are looking forward to a reward in heaven. That is for greater, that is far greater than anything that one might hope to gain in this life. So we look forward to a reward, church. So if you're envying sinners, then Ecclesiastes 8:12 says. But even though a person sins a hundred times and still lives a long time, I know that those who fear God will be better off. Those who fear God will be better off, church. Once again, those who fear God will be better off. So don't envy sin. For if God is for you, then who can ever be against you? So now is the time to stop put a stop to that church because God is not glorified in your way of living. You think you're running the race so well, but well, in fact, you may be running a different race. So, come back to the love of the Father and be filled with His love once again. The reason why you're still fa fa trying to find joys and fulfillment, okay, the reason why you're jealous and envious of sinners because they have fun, well, it's because you've lost the joy of the Lord. The reason why you want to do TikTok, well, it's because you've lost the joy of the Lord. The reason why you want to say bad words, it's because you've lost the joy of the Lord. You've lost His love. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. The reason why you don't have strength in your service towards God is because you've lost the joy of the Lord. That's why you try to do things on your own. Because that joy is gone. And it's hard to serve Christ without that love and joy. So now is the time that we come back to that love. We come back to that joy. We come back to His presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So if you watch this today, God is rebuking you. But as God rebukes you, don't be like Jonah running away from that call. Don't be like Jonah running away from his, his voice. But be like Samuel saying, Speak to me, Lord, your servant is listening. Jesus, here I am. Here I am. So you can put the phone down. You can put the phone down and just listen and just listen to God's voice. Listen to his word. So now, you can put the phone down, just listen to the audio, and just worship the name of Jesus. Go to a place where, where you're alone. And if you start to cry, then it's okay to cry. Let's search, this is what Jesus does. He takes the most, the worst of sinners, he takes the wanderers and, and puts them in the front line to yield his glory and to flex his love. So 378 people, 378 souls, Put the phone down and can you just talk to Jesus? So close your eyes, close your eyes and imagine that Jesus is right in front of you. What will you tell him? What will you tell Jesus? Imagine that you're meeting Jesus face to face now. What will you tell him? What will you say to him? What would Jesus say to you? I want to walk with you. Jesus, I want to be with you. Jesus, I want to talk with you. I want to hear you. I want to feel you. I want you, Jesus. Now, if you're still thinking about the pleasure and desires of this world, just set it all aside and just say, Jesus, I want to walk with you. Jesus, I want to talk with you. I want to hear you. I want to feel you. I want to, I just want you, Jesus. I want church to glorify his name. 